So can I answer yeah. your question? Can, the, the, can the I let's, speak? Then let's speak? both say no. Can I speak? Then let's both say no. We both don't know. This is, I, I think we're kind of identifying no, the primary stop issue. Saying mom to it's me. not You're black, white, okay. it's male, female. Uh, I think that's the issue that we're running into here. No, it is black and white. It's very black and white. I, you understand that like, we're in a trap, can right? You, let You're me say this. this is, it is a trap. Let me say this. It didn't start out that way. Mm -hmm. You made me feel that way. Every Horrible. single conversation today yeah. has been productive. We found more in common than less. Every single one. Yeah. With the exception of this, and this is the only one where I was told I couldn't have an opinion because of white fragility. And I you just have an opinion. I thought this conversation would have been completely different. Well, the good news is and you'll now be able I feel like I'm in a trap. And you'll be able to see the behavior that you have exhibited here. You and not myself. And you can watch it. Okay. You can rewind it. That's what you think of you, black women. Mom. Why do we go to the reason that a lot of white people don't have these kinds of conversations mm -hmm. like this is because they're afraid of being accused of being yeah. no they're afraid of being accused of being racist yeah white fragility well see that's that is an attack to just say white fragility we're on the, i think we're on the same page you're just defining it as different so white fragility means when white people are afraid to confront the fact that they might have racism or might have racist thoughts that's what fragility but so what if they don't they don't literally almost everybody in america does Remember, none of this is possible without you. Join the fight and sign up for Mug Club today at louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club for $89 annually. Join the fight at louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club today. I'm just, I, I'm just laughing because sometimes you guys don't get to see what happens right before we go to air. And uh, Toolman was losing his mind at the uh, the Oprah oh understudy uh, teaser that you just that, saw there. That conversation was infuriating. It's like an hour yeah. long. Like, shut the yeah. f up. Put so, his headphones off. Just, yeah. just scream. He's like, oh, what racist thoughts? You know what I'm thinking now? Shut the f. Get the f out of here. He's yeah, losing his know. mind. What am I thinking? Yeah, I'm yelling at the TV screen. <laughs> You're thinking about roots. Mm. <laughs> um, oh, come on. No, I'm just saying that's what they want to accuse. So yeah, that will exactly. go up tomorrow. And just to be clear, this black and white and the gray issues, they're usually like very, we're doing one in a barber shop here going forward. These late tool man, you, you were there. They, yes. we turned back on all of our camera equipment. Said, we were ready you, to go home. Did you make it a movie? Every movie should have me in it. Remember that was her exact quote. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I said, okay. And then we ran the cameras exactly as we had conversations with everyone else, and it devolved very quickly, <laughs> and it went on for an hour. But, <laughs> spoiler alert, we end up finding some... I still reeled them back, and we found some common ground there at the yeah. end of that conversation. Good, good wrap-up. We yeah, made a special geez. accommodation. Yes, we did. <laughs> we were gone. We, were we gone haven't had your theme song yet, Pops. Okay, oh, oh, okay I can a... chime in. That's all right. By the Free way, hit the, hit the like button, because it helps the algorithm on YouTube, and also hit like if, if you feel Tool Man's pain. <laughs> Show some solidarity with him. <laughs> and we'll be talking about this today. Look, one thing I want to be clear about, there's a reason that we have Alex Jones here at Mug Club. You know, you have him on Fridays. Nick Topalo, people yeah. like Jim Brewer, people like Brian Callen, obviously yours truly here. These are people who um, have risked something. But I also understand, and, and hopefully, and you guys can comment below, you understand that I don't agree with all of these people on all issues. Alex and I have had disagreements on air. But I'm not going to be, I, I feel compelled, and I think there are a lot of people out there, you feel compelled to defend these folks when there's a pile on. Two things can be true. Maybe you don't even like Alex Jones personally, but you have to acknowledge the guy has the right to speak and he's been right about a lot. Maybe you don't like the Proud Boys. Though what is it that you think you don't like about the Proud Boys? Let's assume that you don't, all right? You can still hold that position and understand that it is a travesty of justice for someone to be getting 22 years who wasn't there on January 6th, committed no violence, and encouraged no violence by the prosecutor's own admission. So we're going to give you the ins and outs there today because guess what? You are next. If they can do this 22 years, everything else. And by the way, at yeah. the same time as not prosecuting violent felons from the riots of Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. You do not live in a free country if you have laws. Only if the laws are applied equally. We also have an exclusive Mug Club Undercover. Yeah. There's a Washington school that uh, has been promoting 
Black Lives Matter flags and uh, progress flags. The progress and, pride. And a parent flag. sent us an email, and there's a, there actually already been some development since then. So we're talking about all that and more. Gerald A., how are you, sir? I'm doing well. I love it when Tim loses his stuff right before, <laughs> <laughs> right before the show. <laughs> Typically, it's like he's waiting on a clip or something, and uh, and that's what it was. But it was this. I, I love it. It's yeah, spicy. Tool, tool Man just, you know what's great about Tool Man? Huh. Is he has no desire to like be famous or to be in the line. He just, he just He's a utility player. But he loses his mind about things. He does. <laughs> and it's he's incredibly you passionate. That on video. He's like, I don't care about being famous. I just want to end lives. <laughs> like, oh man, don't oh. piss Tool Man off. <laughs> he's just like a little. Not he's like, literally. He's like a. Well, yeah. And he's so literally. strong. He's just like I a walking sinew yes. of hate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then when you hear this, that means in third chair, you know him, you love him. I came from his loins. Uh, it's Pops Crowder. How are you, sir? All the thumbs down buttons were just clicked. No, no, there are no thumbs down anymore. You know, I hate that I sure. can't chime in on Tim losing it. Pre, you sure, sure. Pre, you, uh, you know, pre-announcement. No, well, you I, can't, I can't chime in until you, already until did. you actually. You already did. Yeah, I know, but I was, I was admonished for it. <laughs> you, <laughs> you saw the sign and you bucked it anyway. You took a ticket on that ride. <laughs> and uh, also, by the way, he just found out this morning that his uh, beloved iced coffee he gets in the morning uh-huh. is 400 milligrams of caffeine. Wow. Yeah. He sometimes Jeez. gets a large iced coffee from Dunkin'. 400 milligrams of caffeine. 2,000 calories as it's well. science. So. No, there's no <laughs> calories. Not in the iced coffee. It's delicious. And they're neutral, so I'm a no, fan I don't, of Dunkin'. I don't get the gummy bears, sprinkles, no. and caramel like Good. most folks. Yeah, well, that's here's why. That's bad for your brain. Mm-hmm. And that can also lend itself. And you know, you're getting up there to Alzheimer's <laughs> and dementia. <laughs> which brings us to... To his fellow uh, fellow graduating class members, uh, <laughs> from extreme weather events to uh, walking, I should provide some context here before we get to this week in Biden. Uh, y- you may not know this; he wasn't supposed to walk out on this war hero. No, uh, that's why it's so odd. And of course, here he is lying about the economy, weather events. It's this week in Biden. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black, I also convened my entire cabinet as part of a whole of government response. And that response is to increase the number and intensity of the extreme weather events and be wary we're gonna be, use all the resources available to the government to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me for the benediction. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. <laughs> Thank God the former vice president wasn't in White Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll follow the old man, whatever. He's gone. He's there. Huh. Huh. What do we do? <laughs> what are we doing? He's a the busy old guy. war hero had it together better. Than <laughs> but to lump me in with him as possible classmates, he could be my father. I know. Oh, that's I not know. true. Well, that is and he would have been furious because you were part of you know the uh, the integration uh, with school for the first right. time there in Detroit, and he didn't want his children going to a racial jungle. Also, <laughs> uh, big fan of the N word. Former yeah, Vice President is, Joe yes. Biden sticks. But I wouldn't too. have graduated last in my class, though. That would have been <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little, way, you, little buffer there. Biden yeah. buffer. You look sharp, uh, Pops Crowder. But when we did, the, yes. we, we still have the uh, submissions for Win a Date with uh, Stephen Crowder. <laughs> half of them were for my dad. Oh, what? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Swing. Yeah. Half oh. of them were for my dad. Yeah. Let your mom know. Oh wait, hold on. Uh, a second, yeah. So uh, we're going to, by the way, get into uh, some claims and truths uh, from former Vice President Biden that he's making about the economy right now. He's right, starting yeah. his presidential campaign. We've already covered it in the past, but the numbers actually have gotten worse since we last covered it. Uh, but uh, before we get to that, you know, sometimes we get exclusives, like we have Mug Club Undercover right, later yeah, on, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Mitch McConnell. Actually, by the way, this is right here on CNN. Just to give you a heads up, Lindsey Graham just said he was concerned about Mitch McConnell, which is just again, it's like yeah, the. The 75-year-old is concerned about the 95-year-old. <laughs> yeah. It's like the There's house no of spring ch- chicken. It's the chamber's cocoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Blue steel. Yes. A cat couldn't scratch it. Cat right. couldn't scratch it. Someone get Gutenberg. <laughs> so as bad as that did look, right, what you just saw there, um, it actually does get worse. McConnell is concerned. Uh, sorry, Graham is concerned about McConnell. Mm -hmm. But former Vice President Joe Biden did say that he had called McConnell, and we have the exclusive uh, leaked audio. <laughs> That's key. Yeah. To make sure you wipe every time. Yes. Yeah. Good job. No, no, it has been wiped. For him. For him. Yes. Yes. No, somebody has to I'm do going the through job. body training. I know yes. what that's all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's and, actually uh, better interactions with the two year olds. Yes. Yeah. You They're do. more communicative than That was actually the inspiration for the whisper, right? If you say yeah. whisper, then you know my son will go, okay. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's very similar. If you have two-year-olds, yeah, you did talk to him. <laughs> Come on, guys. Sometimes, sometimes you just need to let's pull. Let's let's zoom out here. You believe this man is leader of the free? You believe this is the most popular president of all time? You believe this man received more votes than any other president in history? And you believe that this man is fit to serve? That this man is fit to be in the Oval Office? What? Let me put this in context. What other job would you entrust to former Vice President Biden? Hey, do you run a company out there? I was thinking about this this morning. Mm, There's fair. not one. I was going to edit bay? No. <laughs> Research? Absolutely not. <laughs> Getting coffees? It's still a liability. It There's really no is. way. Yeah, yeah. He'll spill it on himself. Burn his yeah, liver-spotted hands? Yeah, that's true. It would just melt that. down at pa tissue paper uh, hand like, the, like he uh, looked at the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> anything? I love it. Nobody's fit to be president. Come on, guys. Let's have some. Con Get out of Do here. you know how we know the game is rigged? They want you to believe that former Vice President Biden, I respect the office, is leader of the <laughs> free world. Ugh. And he does. He's not even. He's 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 not even convincing. His heart isn't even in the lies. So let's get into this here on uh, Labor Day. He went out again. He's preparing his campaign, touting his job creation. Now it's a lie, but see, watch him. Like I said, in my first two years. I've created nearly 13.5 million jobs. More jobs in two years than any president has created in a four-year term. Okay, all right. Mm. Okay, let's go through the claims. In the Wrong. Future. So this is his claim, right, that he just made that, oh, okay, created 13.5 million jobs well, more than any other president. Okay, here's the truth, all right? And we make all the references publicly available. The vast majority of those jobs are returning jobs that were lost due to COVID, right? We saw record oh. job growth, but most importantly, and we'll circle back to this, we saw record wage growth for all Americans, black, white, middle class, mm -hmm. upper middle class, wealthy, all of them. And I get it. Some people say, yeah, but the wealthy got even wealthier. Yep, yep, yep. But so did you. Covetousness is a, is a sin, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> so the vast majority returned COVID, right? Let's be let's be honest about what this is here. It was internationally orchestrated COVID, not the virus. I'm not saying the virus doesn't exist, but it was designed to shut down the economy and force people to vote from home. So 9.37 million jobs were lost to COVID in 2020 alone. So let's do that math, right? He says 13.5, 9.37 in just 2020 yeah. million jobs were lost. So there's about 4 million jobs there. And this wasn't like a Great Depression kind of moment or a 2008 stock market crash kind of moment. It was literally the government turning the tap off yes. and then turning it back on. Right. That's why it's a different measurement. And he can't tout 13.5 with any kind of seriousness at all. No. So this brings us to a, a, another claim here that he's trying to make that, well, hold on a second. But actually, employer, uh, employers, by the way, have been adding record jobs since then, 187,000 jobs in August. The economy is doing great. Okay, here's sure. the truth about that. The job report was really bad. Mm -hmm. I'll get to the 4 million jobs created in a second. Unemployment went from 3.5 to 3.8%. Here's what they're Ooh. leaving out. 1.2 million native-born Americans lost jobs. They have lost jobs. Wow. 688,000 foreign-born uh, workers have gained jobs. Really? Yes. When you're talking about visas, you're talking about the lottery visas. Wow. You're talking about people. So in other words, this is the issue. It's not about, 
I don't think there's a more clear statistic. It's not about immigration. It's not about dirty brown people. No, that's not what it is. <laughs> <laughs> for some people. For some for some people. For some, okay, for some people. Yeah, for yeah, former yeah, Vice President Biden weird. and probably you know his family yeah. reunion, I bet you you probably hear that quite a bit. There's brown people. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, damn it. 1.2 million American jobs lost. 688,000 imported jobs. This is how wow. you know they're not looking. Now, here's some. You certainly can import those votes. Mm-hmm. Hey, 688,000. Hold on a second. What was the margin of error in those key states? Arizona was 10,000. Yeah. A lot of these states were within 30,000. 688,000 hmm. foreign-born workers. Came. Now, I don't know how many of them are eligible, eligible to vote. I don't know how many of them got citizenship, how many of them got green cards versus work visas. But the point is, they're trying to establish a voting base for all time. Americans lose jobs, and we import jobs. That's a problem. That's a policy problem that everyone should be on board with solving. Yeah, and by the way, they're they're not even right on these jobs reports numbers. Every single time they've had a report this year, it's been revised down by as much as almost half yeah. in one month. I think in June they were off by forty eight percent or something. Yeah, they had like to that. lower it down to one hundred and ten thousand jobs for the Jeez. last just for the last two months. Yeah. So I can't even believe the numbers that they're giving me right now. It's like ah, one hundred eighty something yeah. thousand jobs. Are you sure about that? Sorry, did I say one hundred eighty seven? I meant ninety. <laughs> thousand? No, no. Yeah. Jobs. <laughs> 90. Just ninety. And uh, I want you to comment below. That's the beauty of also having, you know, sample size. How has your financial situation changed? How has your employment situation changed since former Vice President Biden has been, uh, I guess, sort of wheeled into office? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, by the way, Chad thinks he would make a great Walmart greeter. Oh. Well, that's because the minimum age is like 95. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it comes with a complimentary <laughs> oxygen tank. You don't it need is. speed bumps. Somebody oh, says speed bump, mean. but no. <laughs> you could probably get out with more than your nine hundred dollars of. Uh, yeah, he's not chasing you down. Yeah. yeah, I can't imagine him checking uh, Costco wait, receipts what? though. He's too, oh no, yeah, no, no, oh, no. Now he's just be licensed to steal. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Is that a Roomba? What do I do? Yeah, with the what's that? It's a robot <laughs> vacuum. And holy hell. <laughs> I'm frightened. <laughs> it, it learns. <laughs> <laughs> so many numbers. What? <laughs> so, uh, here's, here's. Name that reference, though, Gerald. You're a Seinfeld fan. Yeah, no. Yeah. I, so, I don't know. <laughs> thank you. Look, and, and this is the most important claim that you need to be ready to debunk because you'll probably hear this at Thanksgiving when you go into election season. So here's the claim that they are making, and it is verifiably uh, false, misleading. You could say untrue, and again, we'll make the references always publicly available. He has tried to say that he has created millions of new jobs outside of... Now, he's trying to say, get rid of the rebound from the pandemic, which, by the way, your party pushed. Oh, and also, yeah. you said you would never take the vaccine because of Operation Warp Speed when it was Donald Trump's vaccine until you took credit. But I digress. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> He's trying to say that 4 million new jobs outside of the pandemic rebound have been created. So that's not true, but you'll hear this a lot. Here's a clip of him starting that tour. We've recovered all the jobs lost during the pandemic. We've added millions more. Okay, so here's the truth. And context matters here. A huge portion, depending on which numbers, most of them, part-time jobs or very low-paying jobs. Yeah. So since February of 2021, 3.6 million part-time jobs have been created, okay? 37% of Americans have more than one full-time job right now. 56% are considering a second job. There are more right now Americans working multiple jobs uh, than in recent history. I don't know if we have the numbers going back all the way to the 19... 19- 70s, but I do know that in recent decades there are more Americans working part time jobs, working two jobs, and more Americans than ever working three jobs, working yeah. three shifts, just to be clear. And pretty important with this, by the way, weekly earnings down 3.6% since Biden took off. Well, that, and that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but combine that with the inflation rate. So you're, you're earning less money and it's worth less anyway. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that, that probably comes out to, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a math guy, but that, these that are eight, fake 10%. jobs. Yes. Loss of Americans power. have significantly less money. Yeah. today than they did in the past when adjusted for inflation or when not adjusted for inflation. And you add into that 30-year fixed mortgage rates, Shoot. right? They've soared since former Vice President Biden has been uh, you know, in office. 7.18% oh, wow. uh, is the current rate. January of 2021, it was 2.7, 2.77, mm. I think. Yeah. So I haven't done the math, but I think that means that you're in those golden handcuffs. If you were to get into a new house, let's say you sell your house and it's worth half a million and you have to get a new mortgage, you'd probably have to get a house at around... Uh, 290000 something like that over the course of its lifetime, I mean, yeah, the it's... amount that you are going to be paying in interest. So these jobs 
aren't new, just to be clear. They're part-time jobs. There are jobs, full-time jobs, that have been lost forever. More Americans, millions of Americans, have lost their full-time jobs, but we've imported. Good news is over 600,000 foreign jobs, and your, your money <laughs> is basically worthless right now, uh, contextually, compared to what you would have but, had pre-pandemic. Right? But he added so many jobs. Yeah. That's what he's going to go out and say, and nobody's going to challenge him on this. None mm. of the media are going to point out the fact that all of those things that we just said are true. And if look, if his number of added jobs is four million and it's three point six million part time jobs, yeah, I get it that people need to get a part time job, but not when it's thirty percent of the population considering a second job yeah. that already work full time, right? And fifty some odd percent considering a third job. Are you serious? Right. Well, you wonder why people's trust in government progress. has gone away. You know, it's, yeah, because they lie about this stuff and yeah. tell you that yeah, they tell you it's rain while they're peeing on your forehead. Yeah, they aren't objective <laughs> reports anymore. They're all opinions and spin. So, well, you know, they say there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. Now, here's the thing: statistics matter, facts matter. But tell me if you notice this trend. Um, I do think that context often matters more than content when we talk about content with the show. I do think that context with numbers, particularly when you're dealing with the economy, they do matter. And you don't have to get incredibly nerdy. You don't have to have, no. uh, uh, you know, you don't have to have a PhD in bu- whatever that is when people get this master's degree in business. It's like, what? Just go start a business. Um, <laughs> so you don't have to be a genius, but you but do I have do. to go one level deeper. Do you notice that the numbers the left always, they always pull? And you can see this if you – I highly recommend that you follow Joe Biden, uh, the White House, on Instagram because they put out these numbers that just require a quick search to see is fake. And this always brings up the question, well, hold on a second. Do they not have Google or Bing or that bent back paperclip from the you know, Word document? <laughs> um, or are they lying? So they always take the largest number with zero context. For example, Barack Obama went out and said, wage gap. Women make 77 cents in the dollar. Now, the only way – you can make that argument is if you just compare the very broad men's salaries to women's salaries. You're not taking into account degree, experience, number of hours worked. It's just average male pay across all spheres of work and women. For example, another stat, they say guns are the number one killers of children. The only thing that you need to look, look up to see that that's false is, hold on a second, what are the demographics? Oh, wait a second. You take away the 15 to 19 year olds inter- gang violence in urban areas, it's not even close. So the only way they can make the argument, oh, wage gap, is if you just go, okay, compare salary to salary with no context. The only way they can make the argument, it's number one killer of children, well, if you consider 15 to 19-year-olds children. Right. Otherwise, it's drowning. Otherwise, it's automobile accidents. Otherwise, it's toasters, for crying out loud. It's the same thing here with the jobs. When they say, oh, a job's created. Okay. They have to use the broadest statistics possible. They don't include part-time work. They don't include the average sal- the average wages. They don't include the hours worked. So it's, ah, wage gap. Hold on. One step deeper shows you're bullshitting. Ah, gun's number one killer of children. Hold on. One step deeper shows you're bullshitting. Ah, more jobs created. Hold on. One step deeper shows that you are bullshitting. And it's always the case. It's supposed to be the party of the intellectuals. Don't let them gaslight you because you wear a MAGA hat as though they're smarter than you. They're just liars. Well, and it feels like they, they get away with it because it's just, you know, you know that term headline news, that network. Is that still a thing? H&N, right? HLN? Uh, I, well, I don't know if it's LN, but, you know. There was you, you HLN for headline, uh, Gerald. Headline. Uh, headline. Yeah. Scott Christie headline would say network. headline. I don't know. I'm, I'm headline not, news. I'm Doctor, not a network guy. Dr. Grayson. Nancy Drew. It feels like the only thing that they're doing is saying stuff to get a headline and nobody does any any other research yeah. after that. It's like, oh, I want the headline to be that the economy is doing well and that people are doing better than they were before, but I pray to God they don't do any research. And actually, by the way, we've got a lot of chats. I don't know if we can bring them up. Like, We've got a lot of chats of people saying, no, they can't. They're making pay, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. And by the way, thank you for supporting Mug Club. If you're in yeah. that position, thank yeah. you very much for spending yeah. your hard-earned dollar, which obviously we you do don't not have take enough lightly. of here. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much for that. People people have a real experience day to day that does not match what politicians are saying. Yeah. And the right and left do this. The right does it in other ways. The left does it. You should be called out either way. Yeah. These numbers are terrible. The economy is not doing well. That's why people there's no way that this guy wins the election unless there's unless there's unless. nefarious activity. Unless. Unless it's stolen. That sounds like you a guys big lie. You got the YouTube dump button if you need to, but you're allowed to question election results right now. I mean, it's well, you're you're There's no way he wins this election unless it's stolen, just to be clear. You know what? Just call me Amy Klobuchar, call me uh, 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 Kamala Hillary Harris, Clinton? call me Hillary Clinton, yeah. call me Jimmy Carter, Bernie right? Sanders. Who all said that the only way Donald Trump could win is if he stole it, and then when he did win it, they said that he stole it. The only way that this guy wins because of the disconnect, because you Right now, at home, with the clicker on your couch. I don't know. I don't know how you're watching this. You could be watching it on your phone. The point is, you know what it is that you are living, and you know. And even the average American who isn't politically involved knows that something doesn't smell right. That's how you turn people against you. Historically, 
It's pretty much always happened. It's pretty much always happened. When the leadership, when the elites become so out of touch that they don't even seem to be representing the people who have elected them, that's when they lose power. You're seeing that right now with Trudeau. Yeah. And you are seeing the disconnect with this former vice president. And the media still trying to prop him up, still trying to drag him across that finish line, you know, weekend at Bernie. It's not it going is. to work. <laughs> the only way this guy wins is if it's stolen. You stepped on yourself, weekend at Bernie's. That's it's important. absolutely weekend at Bernie's. It's, yeah. I don't think that's particularly original. That's why I felt ashamed. Well, the, the, <laughs> <laughs> weekend at Bernie's, too? I, I think know. you're going to get to that, that net number of people under Trump versus people under Biden and their net, how far are they ahead? Yeah, well, the average salary increase, I don't have it uh, here in the map. The average salary increase under Donald Trump the first three years was over $5,000. Yeah. I think it was $1,800 over eight years of Obama. And then if you adjust for and this is all adjusted for inflation. With Biden, it went down yeah. the numbers. So the I think maybe mission like control will get that to the us. The gap is like $8,000. That's real. Yeah. Dang. It's huge. It's a huge gap. And then you can't buy a house now. Right. You have to rent. You're, you're kind of a permanent renter's class. People look at that percent like, oh, 2 to 7%. No, no, no. Yeah. That's like, you, that is the going from I can afford to make this house payment and have some money left over to do right. some savings to. There's no way in hell I can afford to have a house. Well, the good That's news is thing. if you rent, you know who the biggest purchaser uh, of? Good companies that we know and trust. They have single family housing <laughs> units. Yeah. <laughs> Vanguard, BlackRock, who, by the way, Elizabeth Street, Warren them. deemed too big to fail. Ow. So they get perpetual Aww. bailouts. So you don't buy a house, you give them your money, and then when their business model doesn't work a Elizabeth Warren being the for the people socialist that she is, has determined that Vanguard and BlackRock are too big to fail. And it's never ending. Hey, by the way, have you gotten your residual checks for the vaccine yet? Don't know if you remember this. You paid for that shit. It did. And then they made record profits. And had no liability. Where, where, where's where, where, where's uh, former Vice President Biden? Where's Bernie Sanders? Maybe he's spoken out. of. Where's the Democratic Party speaking out on behalf of you, the working? You paid for this vaccine. You subsidized it. Well, that's fine if you get your money back. Hey, even a, even a CD right now is what, 2.5%, which yeah. isn't that good historically. You get nothing. You pay for it, and then the profits go to these companies. Well, no, uh, Big Pharma is now good. I don't know if you got the Yes, yes, they, On the yes, left, Big Pharma is fantastic. They've never done anything wrong. Good. Drugs have never hurt people, and, and profits are fine. Yep. Well, Biden's trying to step in now and say, look, I'm discounting drugs for seniors. You know, you know that was glad-handing. Hey, 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 we gave you many, many, many billions. How about you discount a few at election time for us, and I'll look yeah, good. Give us some. So, by the way, the first and, and they're already on. existing drugs for decades, so it's free for them to do it. Yeah. They give a little discount, and Biden, you know, wears it. Like he tried bad. to take credit for Donald Trump's, you know, slashing of insulin prices. By oh, the way. I know. He was like, insulin should only be what thirty bucks a month or something like that yeah. for for people. And I was like. That's because I've he, heard this before. <laughs> and by the way, it's selfish. She drinks that like it's Mr. Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> That's when no children it's are around. It's just because so. his pancreas doesn't work. I don't think he has diabetes. <laughs> Nothing works at that point. Everything's going now. Come on. <laughs> he looks like he's just made a glass. Like yeah. he could. If he oh, bumped yeah. the podium, he's going to dislocate ah. his shoulder. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's This is an exclusive that we uh, now have. Thank you again. Your support with Mug Club. It supports our undercover um, investigative journalism unit. So this is a school district, and there have been some developments, actually. Just re yeah, Gerald just, just recently. found this today. Let me, let me make sure you know the name and you know the people involved, and then you can send your emails to make your voices heard. So it's Ridgefield School. I guess Ridgefield district. is a school district. Yeah, school it's district. A, mm -hmm. The school district is Ridgefield. Ridgefield being the school district. In <laughs> Washington uh, has been Washington this, State. Yes, Washington State. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me take, take this from the top. From the top. Three, two, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> the Ridgefield <laughs> School District. You uh -huh. want me to? You want me to be? You want to turn me into something? I'm, the Ridgefield School District in Washington State. That's you, Gerald. <laughs> 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 One of the original viral videos. I love it. Oh, it's a classic. Uh, this is basically a suburb of Portland that happens to be across yes, the river and in Washington. Exactly. Okay. okay, just to be clear. Are we good? May I, I do the introduction, <laughs> please? <laughs> So this was brought to our attention by a concerned parent. They are indoctrinating children right now. You saw that with the Gadsden flag, right? You saw the reaction that yeah. you guys, well, this is the flip side of that coin. We're going to share the story of this concerned parent and the insane interactions that she had with the school. Uh, and as it turns out, the problem is actually way deeper than even she knew. This is Mug Club Undercover. Our eyes and ears are everywhere. We are many. They are among you. We are you. We are Mug Club Undercover. All right. So this comes in from, uh, a, and by the way, you can always send your tips. Is it LWC? Uh, yeah, he, you have the email LWC, LWC tips, tips at, at protonmail.com, proton. proton. yep. and we will protect your anonymity with our life. So this parent, let's call her Mrs. Z from Ridgefield, Washington. Not like Z, like in the, the, the gender. I know. Thing, it's just, yeah. come on, let's not the let letter. them steal letters from us. Z. <laughs> 
<laughs> Too late. You're, uh, you're interrupting his flow, Joe. This person reached out to us with this email uh, uh, regarding the events from uh, late 2022. It said, uh, there's a giant Black Lives Matter flag and pride flag in the math teacher's room, which faces the hallway that all kids walk through before trying the, fo- uh, before trying the formal complaint written route. I had a meeting with the superintendent as soon as I knew about the flag and also a school board member, but they pretty much said that they were powerless because of the teachers' unions. So then this person, Mrs. Z, issued a formal complaint, and this is what you, all of you out there as parents should do. Uh, issued this formal complaint with the school, citing racial discrimination, which I like. That's a power move. So um, she <laughs> said that uh, uh, Stephanie Horn uh, was engaging in anti-white people propaganda and has created a contentious adversarial space on school grounds. Uh, this promotes violence, division, and stating that just lives, uh, Black Lives Matter is discrimination based on color and that that is against state and federal regulations. Now, the Ridgefield School District Superintendent, Nathan McCann, the name being McCann, last name, first name, Nathan. <laughs> I say this because these people, right, there's a huge difference. These, these people, uh, they're supposed to serve you. Hey, public school, th- these are the true heroes. Right. Well, let's show you just how heroic mm-hmm. they are. Well, denied uh, taking action, declined to take action. Stating, I have determined that it was appropriate and not racially discriminatory for the district not to direct Mrs. Horn to remove the Black Lives Matter and Progress Pride flags from the windows of her classroom. As you know, due to your employment for the redacted government workers, including school teachers, do not lose all of their First Amendment rights by the nature of their public employment. So think of when people talk about the, different, the power differential, right, in relationships, uh, men in the workplace, white people in the workplace, is there any greater power differential? than teacher and student. So teachers, First Amendment protected, your taxpayer dollars, by the way. Uh, Students, no. Parents, no. Yeah. Just to be clear. That's an issue. These children have to sit at rapt attention. They have no choice. And these are big flags, by the way. When we showed that image, I didn't realize they took up the entire window, and there's two of them side by side. Yeah. Let's send the kid with a Gatson flag and see what happens. It'd be sent home. So, and this is the thing. They're saying, no, no, we're allowed to have the the progress flags, the LGBT. Can you bring that up again, that overlay of the flag, so people yeah. can see the size of this? See how big those are. Yeah. These aren't two little flags no. hanging up in the corner. By the way, w- one of the policies of the district is that you're not supposed to uh, bully anybody or, you know, there, there's some... matter you should yeah. be able to say that i think we should be able to put that right next to it yep does that make sense yes. i guarantee you the school district would probably step in at that point and say well hold on you're you're telling black people that their lives don't matter when you say all lives matter well why yeah yeah that that's not what you're saying with the black lives matter flag there uh, so it's just happenstance that there are no all lives matter flags at this school hmm. to the best of our knowledge we've checked how about a straight just, just happenstance? You mean there? Are, oh, wait a second. That's right. It's the calling process before you hire these teachers. Mm. If you don't share these points of view, you don't get hired. You're not allowed in a club that is a teachers union because they want to ensure that this kind of propaganda reaches your children day in and day out, eight hours a day. And as a parent, you have no say in the matter. Oh, and by the way, you wanna you wanna use charter schools? You want school choice? No, no. no. We're actually going to push for legislation actively that removes that choice. It is a racket. It is, un- it is a criminal enterprise what they do with public schools right now. Yeah. This is not about educating children. This is about creating an army of foot soldiers. It's the Foot Clan. Yeah. <laughs> and we're very effective. Yes, the Foot Clan. But by the way, Clan, before you say no, we're not talking about hoods. We're talking about masks, Ninja Turtles. Ninja so Turtles you don't yeah, know. Not, clan That's doesn't cartoon. always mean you know, burning crosses or, or it's not, roots. It's not real. Yeah, it's not real. I get that roots was pre-Clan era, but you, you understand the point. <laughs> Now, here's the thing, too. By the way, people have free speech here in this office. Not everyone agrees with me on everything. Not everyone agrees with you. We had a very similar situation. We had someone, Black Lives Matter, flags at their desk, progress at their desk. Yeah. Uh, and we didn't fight. We, um, we, just, we just moved their desk. Set the alarm and I couldn't get out. I was stuck here eating dog food. Oh, hello again, Rowdy McFoamy Huff. 
By the way, you guys may want to move his desk outside. Yeah. Because he seems to be acting erratic. <laughs> I like him where he is. Locked up, <laughs> safe, unable to leave. We still have the Hannibal Lecter mask from that. Intro. We do. Let's just, yeah, we'll put that Puzzle in. Yeah, got it. There. <laughs> so, again, none of this is just happenstance. The superintendent explicitly endorses Black Lives Matter. Oh. So this is a quote from the superintendent. The fact that a uh, display of, by the way, the typos are just crazy. The fact that a display of a Black Lives Matter sign is not inherently racist or likely to cause violence within the school environment is demonstrated by the endorsement of the Black Lives Matter at school campaign by both OSPI and large Washington oh. school districts. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. This is just, the fact that that flag is not likely to cause anything to happen at the school of violence or anything is because we say so. Yes, exactly. Right. It's because the school district says so. That's what he points to. That is his empirical evidence. Yes. Well, like, that's like CNN saying, what? these protests are peaceful because, see, the lower Chiron says it. Ignore the flames. <laughs> it's, it's peaceful. <laughs> I know. It's just, it's a depth of field effect. I know it looks like, uh, it looks like flames are coming out of the back of my head. Uh, oh, they are coming out of the back of my head, but it's still, it's mostly peaceful. You it's are the peaceful. superintendent of a school district and you say, oh, because everybody else is doing this is his justification good. he's an educator so you should correct that oh memo lord like a kid's term paper with a red pen you're like you see, unbelievable these can people. you cite your sources for illiterate. me that are not yours you can't cite yourself yes as a you source. can yes, <laughs> that's you can. not how this works you, i've tried you you can cite yourself if no one actually has the ability to fire you oh that's fair so he says uh ospi has repeatedly tweeted about the black lives matter oh, at school week <laughs> Described by OSPI as involving intentional conversations centered on racial justice and civic engagement. Oh, okay. So you just say racial justice, civic engage engagement. And apparently your school district tweeted some shit. So <laughs> I feel so comfortable fine. with my fine. children uh, next to a male teacher with blue hair and giant fake purple. No violence associated with the Black Lives Matter movement, as you maybe have suggested. Uh, counterpoint, have you seen my tweets? <laughs> Police lost control of downtown. This is gonna blow. Destroyed, then took over their vehicles. No violence. No, that's, <laughs> Steven, that's peaceful. Nothingness. Oh my God. Large groups torch police. Is that Burning Man? <laughs> They're burning a man. <laughs> Widespread destruction yeah, into the early morning hours. That was Dallas. Oh boy. I would have kept driving. There was looting underway nearby. If you landed here from another planet. Uh, it is not, uh, it is not, generally speaking, unruly. Listen to this. Really bad so, Nick, here, Chris. Nick, what they're going to do is they're going to really create bad. what they call a phalanx, okay? <laughs> they're going to create an angle of okay. these shields. And what they're going to then have to make a decision to do is to either hold, which is they expect these windows <laughs> to be broken and people to advance, or run away. Remember when we used to say that, hey, be careful because kids will, uh, they'll, they'll mimic what they see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's always, you know, monkey see, monkey do. Well, what do you think happens when you put a flag up and the kids can run a cursory Google search? I know yeah. Google's going to try and also propagandize them as well. But what, you've now said that that's acceptable. You've now said, well, that's not really a threat. This is, this is civic engagement. But, but what part of any of this has to do with education? Teaching them their multiplication tables, yeah. or their ABCs, or grammar. Right. This is a high school. Yeah. This is this. I believe this is a high school. By, by the way, I don't. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Chop Chaz. Where was that? Yeah, so Seattle. Was it the Seattle? good news is these was kids can uh, they can tag public property in cursive. Ah, there we go. Let's make <laughs> sure that they can do that and get the punctuation correct. And by the way, this is another thing from the superintendent. You can comment below. We're we're going to uh, of course give you the ability to. Uh, make your send voices in your, heard. Send in your complaints. Make your voices heard. One of the bigger indicators here is the superintendent's uh, commitment to what have we talked about? Equity. Equity. Uh, equity. Oh. Just to be clear, when someone hey. says equity, mm. they're racist. Okay. <laughs> you can have equality, not racist, which right. means equal opportunity, mm. or you can have equity, which is insured outcome. You cannot racist. have equity 
without affirmative action, without DEI, without diversity quotas. You cannot ensure equity unless you are picking winners and losers based on race and identity. Equality is everyone has an opportunity. You are now based by something, you know, content of your character, your actions. Your actions are what define you. Equity, when you hear it, means this person is a racist. By the way, it's also important that you use that litmus test to differentiate between people who share your points of view versus wolves in sheep's clothing. If you see someone who claims who claims that they're wearing your team jersey and they use words like equity, nope, nope got to car- carve that one out. So this is what he says about equity. The Ridgefield School District is a community of learners committed to equity. <clears throat> The principle of equity goes beyond formal equality, where all persons are treated the same. Instead, equity fosters an inclusive and barrier-free environment in which everyone will fully benefit. Now, talk about word salad, which this guy tosses. It's beyond formal equality, where all persons are treated the same. Wait, hold on a second. Why would we need to go, to, why would we need to go beyond that? That sounds wonderful. Right. <laughs> Beyond formal, formal equality where everyone's treated the same, you wouldn't understand you're not a uh, superintendent. Instead, equity fosters, meaning it is different from everyone being treated the same. Meaning, people are not treated the same. They are treated differently based on their race, sex, gender, orientation. That is discriminatory. This guy just said the quiet part out loud, and now he's trying to silence a parent. We try to define equity as equality he, he tried to no barriers well that's, he says that's yeah the idea. yeah no barriers but Barrier everyone free. will fully benefit meaning everyone we'll ensure outcomes yeah. that's the key detail right there <laughs> i love this you, why wouldn't you just want everybody to be treated the same so basically what you're saying is no barriers what what specifically are the barriers that you're talking about because we've already established that everybody's being treated the Merit. same you're so who creates those barriers because if it's people of color if it's people who have you know gender identities or gender persuasion sexual orientation what you're saying straight white people, aren't you? If you have a You're white, really saying straight white. Yeah, let me be men, clear. Probably. If you have a white boy in the Ridgefield School District, go uh, somewhere else. You need to take your white boy out of public school at the Ridgefield School District. Yeah, he just yes. told you they're not going to be treated the same. That's and what as you say, is. that that is the starkest power differential right? yeah. with a teacher and a student. Yeah. there is no hope for a kid. And until a kid's an adult and paying the teacher to teach him in form of tuition. He really has no say. He's dismissing a parent like he's a Bangladeshi on tech support. <laughs> <laughs> Very efficient. They also, by the way, this district has a history of supporting radical movements, just to yeah. be clear. And this always matters when people say, oh, the radical left, the radical right, man, I'm in the middle. Well, hold on a second. We're not talking about the fringe left. We're talking about people on the left who are in positions of power at every single level of government, the entire DNC, all of public education, public sector unions. So March 26th, 2020, all sources are available at ladderscutter.com. There was a French teacher wanted to form a book club discussing white fragility and uh, wanted reimbursement <laughs> for buying the book. Seriously. <laughs> June 3rd, 2020, fifth grade teacher said in an email that they, quote, Ended up, they debate heading up to Ridgefield for a Black Lives Matter sign waving. June 9th, 2020, the second grade teachers discuss showing parents and students Black Lives Matter videos. Maybe they'll teach them how to make wait, a, wait, wait, a wait. phalanx. We've, we've got a few for them. Wait, second grade teachers? Yeah. Uh, Seven-year-olds need to have a Black Lives Matter <laughs> video for parents and students? Yeah, Why then, are they so angry, Mommy? Yeah, yeah exactly. Why are they burning things <laughs> That's down? That's a stereotype of an angry black person. No, 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 no. Mommy, no, I'm not racist like you are. What I mean to say is um, uh, those people are angry because they're beating in that man's head. He'll be okay. Is that our Walgreens, Daddy? <laughs> Used to be, son. Used He's to be. black? Is that where we go? It Not used to anymore. Be. Those $996 of free merchandise won't steal themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Get to work. June 24th, 2020, the school librarian asked other staff to send her for Pride Month, quote, a short video or text and pictures about something or someone important to the LGBTQ plus rights and visibility. Boy, asking LGBTQ plus to send you pictures, you're taking your life yeah. in your hands. Oh, a bad idea. Did she just give a homework assignment to the other staff? Yes. She basically <laughs> wanted what to an send asshole. her porn. Yes. <laughs> then September 1st, 2020, a science teacher told a parent who objected to a Black Lives Matter protester back then. Uh, sorry, a, 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 a poster back then. The teacher was a protester. Uh... That in science, women and people of color have long been underrepresented. I want students from marginalized populations to feel safe and supported in my classroom. Okay, how about this? If they have been underrepresented in science, teach them science! It's science. Hey. Mr. Bergeron? <laughs> Behringer? Tom Bergeron's America's... Tom Behringer no was a substitute. Yeah. 
caught the eraser when I was throwing at him and then turned like, oh, you think you're going to play? <laughs> wow. <laughs> he, made his, he, he, he made his voice heard on the first day. Science teacher, they've been underrepresented. By the way, if you're a woman, if you're a person of color and you are underqualified for STEM fields in college right now, don't worry, you'll get in. <laughs> wow. Equity. That's true. Stuck, That's true. Stuck that one. Asian? No. <laughs> We're full up. Now, here's an update. The superintendent at yeah. Ridgefield uh, uh, School District, Nathan McCann, stepped down from the position uh, last month. And we, it just actually came out. I think that information was just made public within the last couple of days, maybe the last week, something like that. And basically, the, 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 they said that they came to like a mutual parting of ways. His skills and abilities, through no fault of his own or the district's, do you like this? Like nobody takes any responsibility yeah. <laughs> for anything that's happening. Uh, mutual parting of ways. This guy's been there for about a decade. Here's a silver lining for you, Stephen. I know you like silver linings. Yeah. A little good. <laughs> news this school district has had several bond issues for those of you who don't know that's like please give us more money because we can do wonderful things for the lgbtq community with it they've had them fail twice recently they aren't getting any more money from the people who vote good. on who gets good. more money good i know that's by the exactly way a, per, what a percent of that money goes to the big guy well yes, yes. Well, what percentage what of the, the teacher union guy. goes to uh, the democrat party uh 99 thank you okay point point Just nine clear. i think yeah <laughs> I was rounding down because I wanted I didn't want people to call me on it and say, no, 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 you're exaggerating. Just be fair. You know what? Here, hold on a second. Let's play it really, and let me just call it a cool 98%. Oh. And it's 98% funded by you. Hey, hold on a second. Public teachers, how are they paying? Your tax. Ridgefield District have any issues, email, and I, I'm cautiously optimistic, the new superintendent at chris.griffith at ridgefieldsd.org. That's chris.griffith at ridgefieldsd.org. Of course, keep it respectful, but if you're a nice. parent in this district, let them know what you expect to see. Let them know what is acceptable if they are in charge yeah. of, of teaching your children for eight hours a day. And by the way, if you're a teacher there, or if you know somebody who is a teacher there, Reach out to us. Yeah. I would love to see, okay, you have the BLM and you have the pride flag. How about we do the Christian flag? I know you don't see that flying at a whole lot of places, mm -hmm. but we can we can find one. I'm sure we can work that up. Yeah. And an All Lives Matter flag. How about we balance this thing out? Does that sound fair? Yeah. Let's see what your response is the moment that flag goes up. Yeah. I want the flag that they hoisted up at Constantinople with the Crusades. Well, that's different. Yes. <laughs> God wills it! We've done a whole segment on the Crusades, by the way. Retaliatory action. If you think that the Crusades are... It, it doesn't matter. Anyway, send your emails to... You can just go watch it. We did a whole deep dive on that. LWC tips at protonmail.com. Look, that distillery was shut down. This superintendent is... Well, we can't take credit for this one, Not but it, there was a lot happening behind the scenes, to be clear. Your voices can be heard. You can make a difference on a local level. And then, of course, you know, Mug Club is what we do uh, on a national one because they can't all be assholes in charge of the media. This has been Mug Club Undercover. Our eyes and ears are everywhere. We are many. They are among you. We are you. We are Muggle and the All right. <laughs> By the way, I think the, I think the camera got adjusted because my, my desk is it looks like a it looks like a that. Tim Burton film. It's all off center. Yep. You see that? I do. <laughs> yeah, I think. So. Did someone say, "Hey, someone must have knocked." Let's make this camera a Dutch, Wumpus. Dutch angle. Yeah. I want to feel like right. I'm watching Doctor. Uh, I want to feel like I'm watching uh, the cabinet of Doctor Caligari every time I come into the show in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, people party in here and they just walk by the equipment, and knock it accidentally. So yeah, like, which oh, by the way, let's like fill the liquor bottles with brown water. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's why I didn't get drunk. We have a guy out there who uses a uh, dip. Just have him spit. <laughs> oh, that's true. Did you it's know, a deterrent. That's why Bottle and Bond is. It, did you guys know this about bourbon? Bottle and Bond was because they were trying to sell bourbon and they just well, they were cutting it and a lot of, they were the food coloring was tobacco spit. Oh, that, really? That's gross. Which also tells you how little people cared about the bourbon taste back then. They, were, they yeah. weren't in a Glen Cairn glass or a snifter. They were just I don't care. I'll drink the spit. Ugh. Ugh. So <laughs> let's go on to this. Here, the Proud Boys. Oh, sorry. I just feel like this gag reflex. Just a hot mouth. It's fine. Hot mouth. <laughs> it's just fine. Now, before we move on to the facts here, I do have a question for you, and please comment below. What is your gut instinct on the 22 year sentencing of Enrique uh, Tario? Right. This is the longest one that we've seen from January 6th. Yep. 
The second longest one, I believe, was just earlier this week, and it was like 16 years. But there was an 18-year sentence for – I can't remember what the guy's – There was an 18-year sentence. Okay, so it was 18 different, different and now it's 22. I can't remember. Yeah. It was leader of a different group. Um, and I'm going to explain to you why they are trying to make an example of the Proud Boys. And I'm going to give you a brief history uh, lesson on, on the Proud Boys, what they actually are. You, you may not – like them. You, you may think it's a silly organization, but to act as though this is a terrorist organization or to act as though this person deserves 22 years in prison is to simply be ignorant of the facts. And it is terrifying that yeah. we have our uh, intelligence agencies weaponized to this degree. So if you missed it, Tuesday, former leader of the Proud Boys, they have to remove white supremacists from it because his name they is do. Enrique Tario, and you'll understand when you see the pictures. <laughs> 22 years in prison. Today, Judgment Day for Enrique Tario. <laughs> former leader of the Proud Boys for his role in a seditious conspiracy that led to the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Terrio sentenced to more than two decades in prison, 22 years, the longest imposed thus far in connection with January 6th. Yeah. Now, just to be clear, they were pushing for 30-something years, 33 years, I believe, is the original sentence. And to put this in context, uh, this is the largest Justice Department investigation in United States history. January 6th. That means bigger than the Boston bombing, bigger than Waco, bigger than Oklahoma City, Epstein, Hunter Biden. Way bigger than Epstein because we still don't have a single name. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I don't even think they've done anything. Way bigger than Epstein. (laughs) Come on. Although Epstein is, you know, he's he's big on he's big on Rape Island. (laughs) Well, that's where he's huge and very big in Sheboygan. So January 6th (laughs) is the largest Justice Department investigation. That would also mean, by the way, the Las Vegas shooting. Bigger than the Boston bombing? Bigger than Oklahoma City? Bigger than Waco? Yes, Epstein. In 22 years? For what? For what, a bunch of dummies walking into the Capitol and then leaving? The only person shot was shot by Capitol Police and it was a woman? This is the biggest investigation in American intelligence history as we're talking about uh, the Justice Department officially. So let's go through some claims and some truths and how this actually affects you. Okay, the claim that they are trying to make here. So that you go, yeah, yeah, first off, you have to accept that January 6th was the deadliest day in American history. It was 9-11 to 9-11 harder. <laughs> I don't accept that, but maybe you do. But even if you accept that, okay, you would have to accept their claim that this Enrique Tario was the mastermind behind 9-11, the sequel. It comes after a jury convicted him of seditious conspiracy, the judge calling Tario, quote, the ultimate leader of the conspiracy. Prosecutors say it was members of the Proud Boys who first broke through the metal gates around the Capitol and that Tario was watching, posting messages on social media. Okay, so here's the truth, and we'll make all these references available. This comes also from the prosecution. Tario, 22 years in prison, was nowhere near the Capitol on January 6th. And before I get to it, I know what you're going to say, oh, he was the one who orchestrated. He did not orchestrate it? Nope. He did not call for violence. So January 5th, Tario had been banned from D.C. after he was arrested for vandalizing a Black Lives Matter uh, banner. Now, the Black Lives Matter activists were not uh, uh, banned or arrested for vandalizing public property. You vandalize their banner, now we're going to have to go to the rule book. Yeah. According to NBC News, Tario in encrypted, this is, this is them admitting it. Tario in encrypted messages revealed during the trial acknowledged receiving a message, meaning Tario acknowledged receiving a message from someone who wanted to, quote, storm the Capitol, but did not directly endorse the plan. This is also from NBC (laughs) News. Prosecutors seemed to concede that much of what happened on January 6th happened spontaneously. So it happened spontaneously. He did receive a text, which, by the way, could have been from a Fed saying, hey, we're going to storm the Capitol. He never even responded. He never even responded with an endorsement of that plan. And he was nowhere near Washington, D.C. when January 6th, 9-11, the sequel happened 22 years in prison. 22 years in prison. So you're telling me that a guy is going there to overthrow the government. The government is actually trying to pump up the ability to sentence by putting terrorism charges on this. I'm not kidding. That's what they did to try to plus up the sentencing to be able to ask for that many years. And he is such a threat. He is so bent on overthrowing the government that you ban him from Washington, D.C., and he goes and sits in a Baltimore hotel? You're telling me that's the guy? What would have happened if you had banned, I don't know, Osama bin Laden? From coming to the Capitol, he's like, oh, I guess I guess I can't fly planes. Like, what? It's a good thing I got the good price that... line and the W. I know. Do you think that that is really the guy that's the leader of this, that is the threat to America? You simply ban him from coming to the city, and he abides by your he ban? He didn't show up. <laughs> Come on. Terrorists. Does this make any sense? Did I can't I can't do anything. We can't take the planes. Why? Because they they, 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 they told no. us we can't. I don't know. I they don't know. Said, I can't. They took our frequent flyer numbers away, all of us. Waldorf Astoria, here we come. <laughs> what the hell? Did this guy have a public defender? I mean... I 
I don't uh, how know. How awful just did his representation have to be to for him to get this? To well, so, so here is the, the one piece of evidence that they try and point to. Again, they admitted he wasn't there. They admitted that he never responded endorsing the plan. Afterwards, they claimed that he, he said he wanted a spectacle and celebrated uh, the incursion, uh, giving the Proud Boys credit. So he celebrated the idea of a spectacle January 6th, and he gave the Proud Boys credit. Uh, yeah, but so did these guys. So that doesn't that's not a reason to put someone oh, in prison. Oh, different Proud Boys. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they're not boys. It looks like Francis and Ganu in a clown wig and Fisherman's... F- oh, jeez. <laughs> Glad you have your own leap button over there. <laughs> we have kids watching. They uh, shouldn't be. Here's another claim. Get in school, kids. Yes. Just so not there. if you're in the Ridgefield no, that's right. no, uh, district. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tario received a fair sentence. That's what they want you to believe. Boy, I, I used to not Based fully understand what? the term gaslighting. Yeah. Now yeah. when you live it, it's like all I smell is ethanol. Yeah, this, this, this guy were about a piece of crap. Yes. Brian Krasenstein. Ooh, so when Gerald gets fired up, you know it's bad. Needle yes. dick! Brian Krasenstein <laughs> said, 20, 25 years seems fair compared to the other's sentencing. I'd be fine with anything over 15 years. Let me, let me just uh, pull that back up for me real quick, wow. real quick. Compared to the other people's sentencing. So basically what you're doing is using as your barometer for what this guy deserves is that other people were screwed, so he needs to be screwed worse. But he liked that they were screwed, just like the uh, superintendent. He's citing his own opinion. <laughs> well, where is this guy's voice? Where is his voice? Where, where are his people, his representation? They should be everywhere. And this is why Donald Trump has made everything public. Because what happens is you're surrounded by lawyers and they say, okay, look, keep it quiet. We'll do this plea deal because they want to minimize their risk and their losses. They say, do this, trust me, and then maybe we can plea it down. And then once it happens, they're gone and they'll probably go on to clients and other clients and say that they got this guy a reduced sentence as though it was a win. Yeah. Do not go quietly into that good night, just to be clear. You do not do that. These people do not play fairly when you are dealing with our intelligence agencies. They are weaponized. They are... They, lady, they are, they are parasites out there. Arm to the teeth. Do, do but a lot. It's awfully cold outside. <laughs> Here's another one. Author Tommy Ahonen says, This is what justice looks like. Enjoy prison, asshole. Look. This man's life is destroyed for an event that had nothing to do with him, and he wasn't even there. Yeah. By the way, you have people, you have people praising Rand Paul getting the shit kicked out of him by his neighbor. You have people praising all the time when you see right wingers who are being assaulted. You have people, by the way, praising the man who was shot in the head. I was it Portland or was it Seattle? I can't remember because they kind of blamed yeah, shot together. him in the head. Said we got a MAGA here. Boom. Dang. And you had plenty. Those people aren't in jail. Nope. This man didn't praise the. The murder of anyone because there were no murders aside from the one lady killed by Capitol Police. And by the way, we don't really have any no. investigations on that. Too busy investigating a guy who's cosplaying, you know, as a paramilitary group. All right. Here's uh, another truth is, of course, the context matters. The sentencing is it's not proportional at all. So let's let's no. let's kind of compare and contrast here. Let's look at him. OK, January 6th. Again, no, there wasn't even that much damage done, to be clear. Yeah. Uh, even the QAnon shaman said, you know, we have to be peaceful. The guy who was the guy who was held out as the example of the, the most dangerous extremist in the country, he didn't hurt anybody. He was escorted. So let's compare January 6th, no deaths, but, aside but, from but he one had lady. horns on his head, though. That's why. He, he, looked, horns on he his. looked mean. He was yes. painted. He looked mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's compare it to Black Lives Matter protesters, by the way. You have hundreds of casualties, meaning deaths and serious injuries. You have billions in damages. So let me give you this. This stat is kind of shocking. Jenner's 120 defendants, okay? They pled guilty or they were, they were completely convicted of, not charged, convicted. Point final. Sorry, I'm speaking French. They were they either pled guilty or they were convicted. What do you say in English instead of point final? Period. Period. Okay. <laughs> in my head, I'm thinking my mom, my mom, whenever she gets mad, she goes, that's it. That's a point final. Uh, and I'm going, what? period. Okay. 120 defendants <laughs> pled guilty or they were convicted. Full stop of federal crimes like rioting, arson, conspiracy. The average sentencing across 120 defendants, serious violent felonies, 27 months. 22 years for a man who wasn't there, who didn't throw a punch, who didn't throw a stone. 22 years, 27 months for people who pled guilty or were convicted of arson. Do you feel free? A lot of them, by the way, had no prison time. They didn't actually end up serving any prison time or they had their cases dismissed. And of course, not just Black Lives Matter. Uh, Remember Antifa, who, by the way, they took credit Mm -hmm. for the violent assaults? By the way, we encountered it ourselves. We've had our own producers assaulted, by the way, through Antifa. So we've experienced it. And you see, of course, the numbers across, again, hundreds of casualties, hundreds of serious injuries, and even some deaths. 
But you have your intelligence. You have, remember Christopher Ray said, no, 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 no. That's not a real thing. I appreciate that. We, uh, we look at Antifa as more of an ideology or a movement than an organization. Now, let me add <laughs> ah. Let me add another r little wrinkle here. Not only were the people who con were convicted uh, federal charges of arson, of rioting, of violent uh, assault, um, causing serious bodily injury, not only did many of them not serve any prison time, not only was the average sentencing time 27 months versus 22 years, in some cities, like Denver, uh, the municipality had to pay out Black Lives Matter protesters for using, quote, excessive force oh, to boy. control the crowds. So, in other words, uh, <laughs> these people aren't charged who create these kinds of violent riots. And then when you try and control them, you have to pay them out because you needed to use excessive force. We used to just refer to it as force to control crowds <laughs> in Denver exactly like these. That's excessive right there. <laughs> Hold on, it's so excessive. The guy on his phone doesn't even look dead. He's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, hon, do you want a hoagie or a uh, pizza? No, he was, no bread, that's nice. eggs. Tear oh, gas. Tear gas. No, he was on the phone with his travel agent. He's like, yeah, they're going to owe me a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> it's so. No, I, I looted a Walgreens and they just fired some tear gas. The city's going to have to pay me out. How do you think? What do you think about Cabo? <laughs> I hear they have nice properties down there. But a lot of these plea deals, though, they're just they're not an admission of guilt. It's it's the weight of the federal government that's going to be is. on you to wear you down, to run the meter on you, and you tap. And it's that's, unending. That's right. It and they choose stops. the targets. Yeah. That's what it is. They and choose they just plea, not just to have plea like out, buddy. a Ray we'll Epps yeah. or anybody like that ever brought in for questioning. Right. Yeah. I mean, I know that I'm... I'm beating a dead horse here, but the horse is still alive and very free in this case. Yeah. And has not been brought in for questioning. But these guys' lives have well, been and, overturned. And let me tie this all together as to why. So remember, Black Lives Matter, their, their leader, uh, Patrice Cullors, um, of course, was huge in the George Floyd uh, uh, protests and venerated the George Floyd protesters, including the violent ones. And again, this is a direct apples out. Called for the abolition of the police. Yeah. Right. Called for the abolition of the police. So, so people in January 6th questioning the results of an election that, by the way, were completely unprecedented with mail-in voting that had never been seen before in violation of state constitutions. They're not allowed to question their government when you have these people actively calling for the abolition of the police when we have record police officer casualties. This person was obviously not charged with anything. Instead, was given multiple awards. So that's a stark contrast ah. to 22 years in prison. But don't worry. It all worked out. Justice was served because she was able to afford uh, multi-million dollar homes. But it's not an organization. <laughs> it's more of an idea. It is an idea. It's more of an idea. Yeah. She but, has an indoor-outdoor pool now. By the way. From an idea. Nice. Yeah, exactly. But, it, and man, don't forget the, the politicians, Kamala Harris, people like that, who said that they shouldn't get out of the streets when the Black Lives Matter people were rioting. And actually setting up funds or contributing to funds to get those people out of jail that have been, I guess, right. excessive forced. I don't really know yeah, how, to, yeah. how to deal with this because they're not, they're not in any trouble at all, I think, mm -hmm. from yeah. any of this. That was the people that burned down the Minneapolis police house. Uh, police well, no, that's not, a, that's not actually a police house. That's just that's a white supremacy building yes and that's why it has to go i mean of course you know the black don't tell the black police officers who no, 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 no 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 they, no. they weren't no, in on right, the, right. No. they weren't in on the gag <laughs> <laughs> they're the black face of white supremacy as we've heard that's and the right. reason they're doing this right now you see uh they were just talking about on cnn they were talking about donald trump and georgia and they were yeah. talking about his indictment this is why they're trying to make an example of this person again 22 years unprecedented was not there did not commit violence did not endorse violence is because they want to tie these people they want you this is this is, okay, the connection. It's very simple. Start off, January 6th, deadliest day in American history. Insurrection. You have to accept that premise. Then, proud boys were behind it and deserved to be locked up for life. Okay. Then, you know who supported the proud boys? He basically is a de facto proud boy. Donald Trump. We need to indict him harder. Well, if the general who commanded Donald Trump's army gets... 22 years in federal prison for what he did on January 6th. What does the commander in chief of Donald Trump's army get if he is found guilty? That is the question that Donald Trump's criminal defense lawyers are thinking about tonight with the breaking news no, that the leader of the so-called <laughs> Proud Boys no. was sentenced to 22 so years yeah. for his leadership of what prosecutors called Donald Trump's army. Okay, a couple of points here. First off, why so-called Proud Boys? 
It's like the this, this uh, Steve Eiserman, uh, who was player for these so-called Detroit Red Wings. But, 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 but they are that. Yeah, and have been. What do you mean so-called? <laughs> it's not so-called. That's their name. Or do you mean the organization that swears off pornography and uh, dedication to their wives? Is that, yeah, that, 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 that organization. The found? white supremacy yeah. organization. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and by the way, what, what do you think they're doing? Maybe some leverage. How much do you want to bet? Comment below. I'm calling it now. They're going to find some former Proud Boys mm-hmm. who knew their best friend's girlfriend, sister's brother's girlfriend, who knew this guy who saw Donald Trump at the Proud Boys 31 Flavors last night. This is what they're <laughs> going to do. Hey, you were a Proud Boy. Did you did you have any direct communication with uh, Donald Trump? Uh, no, I didn't. But you liked him. Yeah, I did. Guilty. Done. That's what they want to do. Can I can I just bring this back to something? Because I, I think this all stems from one particular event that we called out that I think took almost a year because it was delayed by a hurricane that was seven thousand miles away. The January six hearings. Do you remember this this phony hearing? Yeah, we did a full stream when we had a couple of Republicans who think. God, they're out of government now because these people were simply the worst trying to lend legitimacy to something like this. It was this big propaganda machine saying that January 6th was the biggest and worst problem that we've ever had in the government, that the biggest attack on the government. And look, we even have Republicans here that are saying this. They never brought in anybody to counter any of the opinions. And so what they did is forced everybody to think that this was, like you said, 9-11 too. And so we have to treat these people as terrorists now because we've had a hearing on this. We've had all the evidence brought forth. No, you have had a dog and pony show. You have had somebody come out with, I'm not kidding, the worst propaganda that I have seen in my lifetime. And people are paying with it with 22 years of their lives. By the way, one of the other guys, 17 years, 18 years that we were talking about, Ethan Nordine, Proud yeah. Boys leader, sentenced to 18 years, Right. 18 and 22 years. Just think about that. You go to a protest and you want a spectacle. You know what a spectacle could be? Make your voices loudly heard. Maybe don't riot and burn things down. Do we burn anything down? On make your voice. I don't think make your do. voices patriotically and peacefully heard. There you folks. go. That can be. They a never play that. Yeah, it could be hundreds of thousands of people marching over to Congress and saying, "Hey, we don't agree with what's going on." That's a spectacle. Afterwards, going, "Hey, great job, guys. I appreciate what you did." That is not a 22-year sentence violation. I know plenty of people who were there in January 6th. Everyone else will act as though they're they're afraid to say it a lot. No, I know plenty. Now, that being said... I said, "Oh, what happened?" They're like, "Well, I went down. And I listened to Donald Trump speak, and uh, you know, then we did, like marched, and uh, we left. We went home." Yeah, that was it. There are plenty. Again, keep in mind, there were hundreds of thousands of people there that day who were protesting what they not what they saw, protesting the violation of state constitution. Yeah. Uh, for example, in Pennsylvania, there are multiple states that you could argue violated their own state constitution, but they were protesting, for example, mass mail-in voting, which they would say yep. is unconstitutional. They were protesting the specific violation of state constitutions. They were protesting what they saw as an elect and lockdowns, for example. All of this had culminated in there – were, there were many reasons that hundreds of thousands of people were protesting. And then hundreds of people went into the Capitol. And again, hundreds of people, majority of whom were escorted, were invited in. Just to be clear. So this is not, don't let them gaslight you. Were January 6th the worst event in our history? Nope, not even close. As a matter of fact, I think any given day during the months of the Black Lives Matter protests, which led up to this, were worse. Proud Boys, yeah. most dangerous domestic terrorist organization? Nope, Wrong. not a member, but it's not even close. And I certainly would not put Antifa and Black Lives Matter for going by, I don't know, murders up there. Donald Trump, encourage violence? Absolutely not. He said the opposite. Nothing that you just said is true. And it is a crime for this guy to get 22 years in prison, even if you don't like him. We have to remove ourselves uh, from these equations where we go, I don't like this guy, therefore. Look, I don't, I don't care what you do. If you're not a rapist, murderer, or pickpocket, you don't get 22 years in prison. Maybe I disagree with your lifestyle choices. Maybe I disagree with the way that you present yourself. Maybe you disagree with the branding. It doesn't matter. We need to, we need to take a step back here and say, hold on a second. Even if I don't like this person, does that mean that I shouldn't fight for basic, fundamental civil rights here in the United States, especially when the guy committed no violence and encouraged no violence? What kind of America do you want to live in? And to be clear, they want you to live in one where you don't stand up for these people. Hey, we always talk about justice. We always talk about civic engagement. We talk about equity. Where, where, where's the justice here? Hey, these people aren't allowed to, this brown man is not allowed to speak truth to power, who, by the way, followed the law when you banned him for vandalizing a Black Lives Matter flag? Think about that first. Is that the kind of country you want to live in? You do not live in a free country if your country has laws. It's whether those laws are applied equally. 
And this is a scary time. And you know what? You can correct a lot of it with information and you can correct a lot of it with your vote. This is a live show Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern. You also get Alex Jones on Friday. Hey, we have investigative uh, journalism units here. You get the Hodge twins in October. You get Nick DePaul every day, Brian Callen's show, Alex Jones' show. We're about to go on for Guns another hour here. Mr. Guns and Gear. Uh, go to ladderwithcrowder.com slash mug club because it, it's what allows us to at least try and stand in that pocket for even people we don't like, even people who have never met Proud Boys people. Someone needs to say it. Someone needs to stand up against wrong, even though it doesn't affect me. Maybe it doesn't affect you. You could be next. So, Rumble, thank you very much. You guys can click that button, join Mug Club. We appreciate it, Rumble. I don't know how many times we hit the YouTube dump button today. 20 or so. <laughs> Quite a few. Oh, we're about to play the game because Pops Crowder is here also. Uh, Zoomer slang. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> YouTube, piss off.